St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, asked them to come out of hiding and support the ministry of the church. And that is also what Father Jacob Rose did when he moved to his new parish in Peru. I came to St. Joseph's just over a year ago, and within a couple months' time, I was asked to raise this money for the diocese, for the annual diocesan appeal. On the appeal Sunday, I told my parishioners the good things that the diocese does. The way we support our seminarians, the way we support Newman centers and Catholic education, catechesis programs, bilingual uh, outreach to our Hispanic minorities or those that need pastoral care just as much as we do. And I said, this is the deal. And when we're a bigger church than just right here in Peru, can you help? And by doing that, just asking and saying what we're doing, we increase our givers at St. Joseph's by almost 35%. And this year, I want you to join that 35% so we can grow even larger and build up the kingdom of God. And building up the kingdom of God by actually changing the lives of young Catholics at our college Newman centers is what Sister Sylvia of the Servants of the Pierced Hearts has been doing for many years. I'm thinking of one example of, there's many like this, but one, um, a, a, a girl who um, came to meet with me and she wouldn't, couldn't look at me in the face. Um, we had two meetings in which she spent the entire time looking down at the floor. I started just praying a rosary because she did not know how to deal with the pains that she has had friends that had committed suicide and things like this. Um, eventually, this woman, um, this young woman, started applying everything that we, we, we taught and she just was always in the Adoration Chapel and just came. Um, we had a whole talk just on confession and it was basically for her and she eventually started going to confession and her life has radically changed. She's now married, um, she's pregnant, she is serving in the church. She started, decided that she wanted to work for the church. She helps her and her husband now help run a young adult group which um, just recently they sent me an uh, a video of like hundreds of young people that are now coming to this event that they do, which is actually very similar to what we do at the Newman Center. Um, their lives are not the same once they go through the Newman Center. But the dedication of everyday Catholic couples is what can inspire us the most. A couple like Tony and Mickey Nickrent of Our Lady of the Lake Parish in Muhammad, who are active in Curcio, youth ministry, teach CCD and confirmation classes, and now Tony has become a permanent deacon for the diocese. Our parishioners, they, a lot of them would come to me and say, you know, you make a good deacon. Or and, the or, or that, community. yeah, and, and so yeah. that was kind of my calling, and as I went into it, I kind of said, um, I'm going to give it my best shot. And, and if they tell me to go home, I'll go home. And uh, I just kind of went in with an open mind, open heart. Um, I'm not, uh, I've been a carpenter all my life. Um, I'm not, uh, uh, I, I've never graduated college, so I just always went, uh, went to college for a couple of years and then I started working in the field. And, uh, but God has blessed me. And, and just, I was told one time, just be the best Tony I could be. Yeah. And that's all I can be. And God made me for who I am. And, and he's got a perfect purpose for me to, I guess, to be on the altar and, and evangelize to, uh, to the parish. In today's Catholic Church, many of our young adults have challenges that most of us never faced. Helping them reach their Catholic hopes and dreams is how we can really serve one another. Listen as Maddie Mangieri shares her feelings from the heart. I think it's really tough to be a young adult Catholic today. I think it's tough to be Catholic, period, but I definitely think that it's tough to be a young adult Catholic. And it's very important that we root ourselves in the truth. It's a desire of my heart that one day, hopefully soon, God willing, I will be married and have however many kids the Lord <laughs> pleases, um, and that they would be, that they would grow up in a church that's active and really takes the faith from the head to the heart. I think that that's what I kind of missed growing up, whether that was, you know, from whoever taught it to me or, or from my own just kind of um, closed off 
greatness, if that's a word, but I just really, truly hope that the church is vibrant when my kids are growing up so that they see that the faith is very relevant and it's it's not something that is beyond reach, that it's it's within their grasp and it's something that they can make their own, that Jesus is not far, that he is right with them um, and that he wants to be their friend and that they just know his love very in a very real sense. Finally, no ministry is larger than our system of high schools and grade schools under the leadership of Bishop Jenke. We know that when you choose to send your child to a Catholic school, they are far more likely to remain Catholic as adults. I truly believe, not only as the superintendent of schools, but as a parent, as a grandparent, um, as a Catholic, I believe that our schools are the most important mission that we have right now in the church. Uh, when we think of how many children we educate, and we think about how we are forming them in the really important years of their life, and what we want them to take on into their adult life, as no matter what their vocation is, what greater good could we do? What greater good could we do? What service? Um, the projects that our children have in schools in regards to uh, service learning, they go to nursing homes. They go to, uh, they go to Sophia's Kitchen. They go to soup kitchens. Um, they rake leaves. They are tremendous in what they do for service. And again, that is teaching them that what we do matters here and in the hereafter. And so I cannot say thank you enough to those who support the mission of Catholic education and for all those who work in this mission. It is religious truth that by giving, we receive. People who give of themselves are blessed by God. They know the joy of doing the work of Christ. It puts their own personal problems kind of in perspective, and it blesses them in all the joys in their life. Uh, guided by the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, I believe the servers, the givers, the ministers of the church are enormously blessed by God. They know that joy of the Holy Spirit that comes from loving and serving. There's a phrase called sacrificial giving. And with those who have great resources, it would be a blessing in their lives to give to the poor, to our food pantries, to support our Catholic schools, our Newman centers. And for those who have very little, uh, the widow's might, the penny, might be a symbol of their generosity to Christ. And their prayers, most of all, uh, enable the church to do what it's called to do. An enormous blessing in my life is the privilege of giving blessings. So in the name of Christ and his church, it is my privilege to bless all of you, your families, your friends, bless all of your concerns, your worries, your hopes, and your joys. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.